I am here with Molly Mahar. No. Mayhar, actually. Mayhar. Thank you, Molly Mayhar of Stratajoy.com. And she specializes in, I'm going to just say what I think you do, and then you can say what you actually do. Love it. <laughs> I will transform. In like really guiding and encouraging women through the quarter life crisis and being Gen Y and what that's all about. And as a Gen Yer, I know what it's all about. But what was it all about for you? And you tell what you actually do. No, it's pretty good. I mean, quarter life crisis, though it is a funny phrase, and uh, you know, I get a lot of looks, especially from men in suits. Quarter life crisis, and like, you know, it's a time when you do everything right, and you go to school, and you graduate, and you get your job, and you get a promotion, and you're still like, fuck, this is all. Yeah, yeah it's that transition, figuring out what does success look like to you, how can I actually express my values, if you even know what those are. There's a lot of uh, expectations that get internalized. Yeah, so working through that. Obviously, it's called Strategy, which is the strategies for joy, peace, and choosing happiness first, making that a priority. So, did you go through some sort of quarter life crisis? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. What was that, that like? What happened? <clears throat> well, I was an Ivy League grad. <clears throat> you know, the Victorian type person. And I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> but I like to say, I work with high achieving <laughs> women who are trying to reconfigure that. Uh, and I was doing hotels. That's what I ended up doing. Oh, yeah. So I was like a sales girl, and I planned big fancy conferences and weddings. And I, you know, I wore a suit and heels, um, and a lot of men in suits. And I kissed up to them and sold them cokes for like four fifty. Yeah, like mini cokes. And I, I just in a day I was like, this, this is not my life. I don't know what it is. This is what I thought it was supposed to be. And I was looking at the women ahead of me, the ones they were grooming me to be, and uh, I couldn't see myself. Right. So it was a rather actually a very dramatic, traumatic quarter life crisis. I started drinking a lot of wine and being really bitchy and uh, to my boyfriend. And Is I he said, the same when you're married? To we, yes, we okay, are now yeah. married. <laughs> we have survived the quarter life crisis it worked together. Out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he, we left. I, I ran away from my quarter life crisis. So I quit my job. We sold everything we owned. Very similar to the Freedom Tour. Uh -huh. And we took off for a year and traveled around the world with backpacks. And I gave myself kind of that time and space to say, okay, Molly, like, what is it you're supposed to do? Who do you want to serve? How do you want to live your life in a way that feels very, however overused this word is, authentic? Yeah. And connected. And being of service in some way. Mm -hmm. So it was about ten, nine, nine, ten, no, ten months of thinking and writing. I had no idea what like life coaching was or even personal development. I think there was a Tony Robbins audio on my iPod. And that was probably my first like you know, motivational, you can do something different. Uh -huh. So Tony Robbins. Yeah. Thank you. He starts a lot of people <laughs> off actually. He does. Yeah, so yeah, he's I doing remember really lying on the beach in Barcelona. Is that the one at the beach? Yes, listening to my yeah. Tony Robbins and uh -huh. reading in my journal. Cool. Uh, so I got back and that was that. I started Stratajoy, and it's been two and a half years already. Yeah. And so you actually do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. You write. Yes. And then you have this other thing that you just launched. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Cool. Joy juice. Joy juice. Joy juice. <laughs> Lots of joy going on over at Stratajoy. And uh, in you. Yeah. You're just pretty bubbly, joyful person. I am. Not all yeah. the time, though. No, of course not. I have to tell people that this is, I have high highs and low lows. Good. And I the embrace spectrum. both of them. Yeah. Totally. Uh, the Joy Juice is actually a set of journaling prompts that will happen over the course oh, of a year. Cool. I, I use a lot of writing in my work. I use a lot of writing with my clients. I think kind of taking out that critic and the one that might control what I would say to you mm -hmm. or say to your you know, listeners doesn't happen when you're journaling for yourself. And it's right. not blogging. It's doing your personal writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taking out that critic and just, just going head right out of the fingers <laughs> onto the paper. <laughs> And I uh, use it in my other program, Joy Equation. I do 30 days uh -huh. worth of this kind of more intensive uh, work. And people were getting done with that and loving it and saying, I like journaling for those 30 days, but now that it's over, I don't know what to write about. Uh -huh. and I'm like, that's a problem? Right. You don't know what to write about? Right. Okay, I can, I can help with that. So yeah. I wrote prompts on everything. There's like themes for your month. There's a month of love and relationships. There's a month of intention. There's a month of freedom. There's a month about sensuality and sexuality. And, you know, all the juicy things that Gen Y women are, are dealing with in yeah. their lives. Yeah. So, nice. And I, what I love is that you're giving permission to Gen Y women to be thinking big now. Because yeah. so often I was raised hanging around a lot of midlife women because of my mom's work. Um, and 
what I found is that they were waking up at the age of 50 and thinking, oh, what about me? What is this all there is? And how can I find joy? And so with our generation, we've been given permission by those women who've come before and kind of paved the trail for us to actually start asking those questions earlier so we don't have to spend 25 years numb and then yeah, finally yeah. ask what might I like to be doing right now. It's been really funny. I've met a lot of coaches all over and I have had some interesting reactions to working with women in their 20s. So like, uh -huh. Oh, women in their 20s, they are not ready to think about their lives in that way. I'm like, actually they well, are. Well, yeah, that's not true, but thank you. Yeah. Well, I'll take that into consideration. And I was scared because that was the feedback that I was getting at the beginning. Uh -huh. This will never fly. You're your market's not ready, they want to talk about like cocktails and shoes. I'm like, yeah, we do want to talk about cocktails and shoes. But then we want to talk about like life dreams and mm -hmm. what do we want to pass on to our children or our communities mm -hmm. or our workplaces. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I had not found that at all. Women in their 20s are absolutely able, willing, excited about going yeah. deeper. And the reason Molly and I met is because my friend Kim, who I'm on the way to Seattle to visit, we're here in Portland, Oregon at the World Domination Summit put on by Chris Gillibo. And uh, anyway, so we're on our way to Seattle, <laughs> and my friend Kim saw that I was heading out on the Freedom Tour, packing up everything, living on the road, and she said, oh, my friend Molly is on this road trip, you should meet her. So I go to her website, and I filled out the contact us form, which still in my head, even though I know my contact us form goes right to me, I still have this idea that everybody has like several barriers to entry, so I like fill it out, and I'm like, well, we'll see if she ever contacts little old me. And then I get a call, I'm on the street, and I get a call, and it's like an unknown number, so I pick up. And it's like, hi, it's Molly Mayhar. And I'm like, oh, how did you get my number? I just found like, out you just emailed me. That's uh. So anyway, but tell me about your road trip, because I've had lots of ups and downs on uh, And I'm like doing, you know, recreating what the Freedom Tour is, Freedom Tour 2.0. But anyway, okay. so tell me, what did you discover? What was yours like? Yeah, uh, so I was a little bit of wanderlust, obviously. Um, I just got married in August, and for our honeymoon, we decided to live out of our car for six months. It sounded like a great idea at the Very time. romantic. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? All those nights in the tent. Um, I actually have yet to sleep in a tent. Oh, we'll see. Classy. Very. Kate's a classy lady. <laughs> um, we had a tent on top of our car. So, yeah, yeah. We, we took off, and it was part, it was part strategy. I was teaching workshops. In your hometown, mm -hmm. right? Nain up there. Yeah. Um, but I was also just observing. I was spending some quiet time, like, how do I feel about the world? Uh, I'm really curious about people. We would go to a new city, and my husband would be like, oh, let's go on all the, like, the tours and learn the history. And I'm like, let's just meet people. I just yeah. want to talk to them and have them tell me what they do and what they love and what they despise. Or <laughs> the stories, the curiosity. Yeah. Um, but the, as the trip went on, it was, I found it really hard to balance like play and work. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, that's a luxury of our businesses that can be run from the road. Yeah. I mean, you I can, but I felt like I was being a bad person playing, and then I was being a bad like worker bee, and so I had a lot of struggle with that. Yeah. I imagined somehow I'd like wake up in the morning and I would meditate, and I would watch the sunrise, and I would drink my green tea, and then I would get online for a while and coach a client. And yeah, no. I was like, oh, where are we going to sleep tonight? What are we going to eat? I need to pee, and there's... Yeah. Uh, so I made it to Miami, uh -huh. up to up to Maine from Seattle, and then down to Miami, and then we flew home for the holidays. And I looked at Ken and I go, "I'm gonna stay home for a while." Yeah. I'm like, "I know the car's in Miami, but I think you should go back <laughs> and drive it to San Diego." So we did that, and he uh -huh. had a good man adventure, and cool. I stayed at home and caught up with my business and like reconnected with everything, and yeah. and then I got to spend a really awesome two months doing the West Coast, which I love the West Coast, so that was. Perfect, and I had come. I you know, had been rejuvenated and rested, and could enjoy it again. Cause yeah. I was burnt out after those first four months. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm at. That. It's exactly <laughs> four months, and I'm like, I'm so tired. I just want to go home. <laughs> There's yeah. something to be said for not having to make those daily decisions. Like you know where you're gonna wake up. You know that you can eat the food in your fridge or wherever yeah. you need. Um, and you forget that when you're on the road or traveling in any way. And there's, yeah. there's so many travel hackers here that have so many decisions to make every single day. Well, that luckily, gets yeah. Yeah. It, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, well, I'm happy to know about your road trip, and it gives me sort of some insight into my own, and there will be future material on that. But <laughs> Rest. Yeah. But anyway, so go find 
Molly at stratajoy.com. And are you you tweet as Stratajoy? Stratajoy. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, we've been having an identity discussion here at the World Domination Summit. Do you tweet as your brand? Do you tweet as yourself? For now, doing? I'm Stratajoy. I'll so let you know if it moves over. But so go find her. Yeah. If you are in Gen Y, in a twenty something. Or if you know anybody, or honestly, I know you do work with some women. Who I do are work not with all in that age. age. Yes. Okay, yes. so just go find her if you resonate. And thank you so much for coming thank on you the for show. Thank you for having me. <laughs>